Alright everyone, welcome back to another of the letter. And I gotta say guys, I'm a little upset about what happened previously. But we're off to another new start and we're gonna see how that one goes. So I hope you guys continue to enjoy watching. And with that said, let's keep it rolling. Alright guys, we're continuing off where we last left off and what uh thing Ugh, I don't even I have no words guys. I don't know what happened. I I thought I did everything right and Okay, I'm of the belief and I'm probably wrong. In fact, I know for certain I'm incredibly wrong, but I'm gonna believe because I wanna I wanna have some semblance of positivity here that Isabella is still alive but in critical condition at the hospital. I don't wanna believe that she's dead yet. No! I, I, ah, uh, it's, ah. Uh. Alright guys, we're continuing on from, uh, to Hannah's story. It is far too easy to get them to pay attention in Raptured. They hang on to my every word and follow my every move. All of it, it would have been, all of it would have been stifling had I not grown used to such stares. Most are respectful, some are hostile, if we are honest, and a few are downright inappropriate. After all, I am... Hannah Wright! This guy over here looks like the priest. <laughs> There's a moment of agitation as a familiar but less than welcome face approaches me with a suggestive smirk on his face. Of course, I would have to keep a benevolent smile and greet him as I greet any good friend. After all, this man can turn heads, being famous in his own right. Officer Lee! What a pleasant surprise! I didn't think you'd have the time to attend tonight's party! He is more Luke's friend than mine, really, and I am quite sure I only invited his wife. Much like I am only friends with the Chief Inspector because of Luke, Luke is only friends with Ro Rochelle because of me. Unlike how I treated Lee, however, Luke never hid his animosity for the Lee Matriarch. It was an odd sort of relationship where we would have an awkward double date. I don't even recall his first name. It started with an N, I think. I might be wrong. Aside from being Chief Inspector of Luxborn Police, his wife, Rochelle Lee -ne -ne Vance, owns a general electronics company, fridges and freezers mostly. Oh, I always have time for my favorite socialite couple. Might I say, you look positively ravishing tonight. I feel like I've heard that voice before. I cannot put the name on it, but I, it sounds familiar. I see the husband isn't with you. And this guy is coming on a little too strong and a little too creepy. The way he eyes me up is enough to make my skin crawl. I just wish Luke is here to fend off the more unseemly of our peers. You know, the ones. Men who are just a bit too friendly, staring too long at my assets and getting close just because my husband's not here. And to think they have the gall to do this at my own party. In my own house, if I might add. But like any high society woman worth her salt, I know how to handle it with grace and dignity. I... I suppose you are looking pleasant as well. Luke's busy with work, unfortunately. Michelle isn't here? Hmm, shame. I do hope he isn't causing you much trouble. That husband of yours can be a bit tough sometimes, acting like he's still some young bachelor. Way to change the subject, sir. You are doing poorly on that. The wife sends her regards and her apologies, but something came up with a doctor and she needed to attend to it. You know her being pregnant and all. And you're not there for her, dude? What a... Ooh, no, no, no. We make small talk. Rather, I'm forced to do so as he would not leave my side after finding his place there. Much to my chagrin, I've been extricated from a few who flock in hopes of flattering for I can tolerate them for better, th far better than Lee. He is a nice enough person I adore his wife who is obviously the brains behind the two. But there is something unsettling about him. I do not trust him as much as I want to. He regaled to me tales of the Luxborn Police Department, a different affair to the usual gossip I am privy to, and, though I loathe to admit it, is interesting nonetheless. I expect the topic of business to die out quickly, which would be understandable enough due to the confidential nature of his work. 
But oh boy, was I wrong. So, we're in civvies. I steal and drive off with one of the police mobiles, right? In the mirror, I see the new tent chasing on foot and screaming about theft. The look on his face was priceless when I parked in the garage. The garage? Okay. Oh my. You made him chase you all the way home for a prank. What did Rochelle have to say about that? Rochelle has a strange love and hate affair with Lee. He's a married man who did not grow up past his early 20s, judging by the way he acts. Surprisingly enough, they've been married for a good 20 years. A lifetime if you compare it to my marriage of 7 years with Luke. I, on the other hand, well, Luke is no Lee. I should be happy about that, I suppose. Although my darling did have his moments. Hey, the wife pulled my hair and gave me a good talking to, though. Besides, we live in a flat a block away, so it wasn't much of a grand chase. Weren't you living in a house near the countryside? Move for work, you know. Or you probably don't. No, I don't. But a flat in downtown. I suppose if that's what you like. Oh, it's alright. Hate that tiny place, no matter how convenient it can be for work. 55 square yards are not enough when you need to get away from the wife. I wouldn't mind a place away from the city. Even started looking at the ads. I spied an interesting lot, actually. Heard it was finally put up for sale. Or that something mansion, you know the one. The one with all the ghost stories. I know what he's talking about. There are really only a few urban legends around here. It's... The Ermagood Mansion? Uh, that's the one. How worthy of a king it is. I'd buy it myself, but Rochelle would only gripe if I brought it up to her. You should. I'm sure that mansion would welcome you with open arms. Not to mention all the expenses a place like that. It'll be a real fixer-upper. You also have to find someone willing to work there with how superstitious people can be. If it becomes a problem, just hire someone to do an exorcism. Actually, I do know of someone who could be up to the task. You remember the Ludgates party at their Christchurch summer residence? Of course. It was an excellent soiree. Everything was so classy, too. Such good taste. Oh, that place was a pigsty until they hired out this interior designer and they turned it into a bloody palace. She worked for the Exodus for their apartment in Soho, too, and they recommended her when we were looking up pieces for our beach house in Porto Colom. I think I have a business card, right? It no, I must have left it in my other jacket. Anyway, she's called, uh, what's her name? Uh, McCullough, uh, Marianne, I believe, yes. But truly, if anyone were to get that place in McCullough, well, they'd be the envy and the talk of the town. Well, if you put it that way, I might just snatch it up for myself. Ah, so this is what kickstarted her, uh, interest in the Ermengarde Mansion. Still a little off-putting, but alright, nothing insidious. This place was starting to feel a bit small lately anyway. I would still prefer it. Officer Lee over here took it instead, because he's not a good dude. Sure, a three-story penthouse might not fit the definition of small for some people. Okay, maybe a lot of people. But it isn't big enough to have grand parties in. And that's what's important, fellas. As it is, I only invited about 30 people to this one and it already feels cramped in here. I'm looking at the place, it doesn't look cramped at all, but hey, who am I to say anything? I'm not uh, super rich like these guys are. It certainly would be nice if I didn't have to ride an elevator up and down several floors before I can get anywhere as well. All Luke's words and not mine. Besides, I've been looking for a good anniversary gift. Luke might like this one. Where is he, anyway? Luke is dressed to the nines as he usually is, and he looks ready for whatever the day will throw at him. His butler and valet wait at his side, just in case he is as ready as he looks. Oh sure, that is normal. What is confusing me is the fact that he is on his way out of the penthouse, considering we won't have anywhere to go until much later. Where are you going? I am to attend the Triad Autumn Tasting. I do believe I informed you of this two weeks ago. Man, he he, he sounds too haughty, man. It's just... Ah, it's, it's bothersome. Yes, and might I remind you that I had stricken that off your schedule? Because one, the doctor told you to stop consuming so much alcohol. And two, I informed you a few days ago about the open house we are going to attend in its place. 
I've even found this marvelous interior designer, Mary Ann McCullough. It's a three and a half hour drive to Cardiff. I don't have time for this. This is like that little party you threw all over again. You don't inform me of it, and you expect me to stay and be a gracious host when I have business elsewhere. Elsewhere. You know how I operate, Hana. Unless this was penciled in, I am sticking to my schedule. If I may intrude, the madam is correct. Your physician did insist you moderate your drinking, unless you wish to incur acute pancreatitis. And you did have this open house penciled in last Wednesday morning. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, your highness schooled you, sir. Bullocks, I don't remember doing so. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be drinking so much, brother. Well, you did. While very hungover, in fact. Ho, ho, ho. He did. Moaned about me being too loud, but gave in after some pushing. Perhaps that was a bit too cruel and manipulative of me, but... Whose side are you on? Come on, Luke. You promised we'd do whatever I want this weekend. Gordon Bennett, fine. I am giving this house tour of yours a chance. But if it proves to be a waste of time, I am going to Cardiff, and you are going to take a cab home. How is it they're married again? Are we clear? Wow. It's just a bit of a husband and wife tip for tat, isn't it? All couples have their arguments. This is a bit much. Once the honeymoon phase is over, as they seem to call it, reality sets in that you and your partner might not always see eye to eye. I don't know how soon you guys got married, but I'm sure during the dating phase you would have been able to, you know, gather some intel on one another. Perhaps it has been the years. Seven of them is nothing to scoff at. I just cannot bloody believe I agreed to this. I was really looking forward to the triad tasting. Though sometimes I think it's something a bit more than just simple disagreements, and I have to stop myself from wondering where we went, where we went wrong. <laughs> Ugh. There's always the triad Christmas tasting in Manchester next month, and that'll only be an hour and a half drive. Now I really hope that Hannah gets away from the mansion and he stays there, because this guy just, he just doesn't deserve it, man. Have I been neglectful? Have I offended? No and no, not so far. Have I acted shamefully? Uh, you did manipulate, but I think it's it, it'll be forgiven, you know? Yes, but Cardiff! Shut your mouth. Just shut your mouth, Luke. It's just, it's, it's not. Certainly any problem can be discussed. As long as he doesn't turn me away. Well, there goes my good mood. Oh no, anything but your good mood. Are you happy now, Hana? Very. Indubitably. <laughs> Remain silent. Okay. <laughs> no. Yes! I am very happy, Luke. Because for once in a very long time, we are doing what I want. I'm ecstatic. Understood. And this would be perfect if you stop acting like a child who needs their nappy changed. We will be leaving after lunch for the Ermengarde Mansion. You are going to park your rear in the car and keep mum. And you are going to behave during the tour. Needless to say, Luke looks a bit shocked at my little outburst. He opened and closed his mouth a few times, struggling to reply before he crosses his arms to look like, well, a moping child. Any more rules for this little excursion of yours, your highness? No wine. Boom. No wine? Unacceptable! I am already not allowed to the tasting, and you would deprive me of that simple pleasure! What did you see in this guy, Hannah? If I see you take one sip today, I will put the stocks under lock and key. Do you understand me? Don't forget the bottles he keeps in his dresser. I am really liking your highness. He gets it. He gets it. Whose side are you on? The winning side, sir. How many times in one day can you ask that? As many times as I need you, traitor! The ride to the mansion is quiet, with Luke having stared out the window the entire way, not paying attention to anything around him. Let us now check out the relationship. Luke's relationship is lowering, or I wouldn't know if it was already past the threshold or not, but it wouldn't bother me if it lowered at all. We're about, I think we're gonna meet Marianne. 
Marianne? Marianne? I, I, I pronounce it as Marianne, just for fancy's sake. Alright. Man, I hope I didn't kill Isabella. Meanwhile, I am conflicted. I don't know if I should apologize for changing his plans like that. But by the time we arrive at the mansion, I see his eyes light up in genuine interest. Apologizing is the last thing on my mind. The whole affair with the Ermengarde mansion is certainly an interesting experience. The place had been renovated and restored by the owners to what they claim to be acceptable standards. The mansion itself looks like something befitting a fairy tale or a period piece. It is tastefully decorated and, with a little bit of love and attention, I'm sure it can be a place looking that I can call home. You, my friend, are a very brave a woman. And the number of other prospective buyers that have come from the powerful and the wealthy of Luxborn certainly did not disappoint, marking this estate as prime property. The leads are amongst the group who went with the Rose Woman, and I saw a few other notable faces, though I did not really feel like mingling. Unfortunately for every one of them, the Wrights are interested in buying. What's been bugging my mind, however, is that Isabel. What is her problem? I still don't quite understand what is happening. One moment she's scrambling to give us the paperwork to finalize the sale, then she is panicking over some sort of prank letter or another. Dear me, is Isabel alright? It's apparent with the way she shakes by and by the pallor of her skin, something has really shaken her up. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? I am worried, but it would be best if she is attended to by someone more familiar to her, like her partner. But even then, the girl refuses Rose's offered drink and looks just about ready to make a run for it. No, I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me, I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. And she does so, just as I predicted, and her partner follows like a concerned mother. There's an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of whatever that was. The others murmur and gossip with each other, speaking of the poor, daft girl, and telling the tale to whoever was not audience to the act in the first place. It doesn't take too long for a woman, Rose, to return and pull us aside to, into the study for what I rightfully assume is damage control. Rose invites Marianne in too, hoping to apologize to her as well. But the woman refuses, saying she is not one of her clients anyway. That leaves my, Rose, and Luke, the last all too eager to make himself comfortable in a study he's no doubt already claimed as his own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. She's young and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. But it did not go to her head, it really did happen. And it must be this terrible heat, too. Not a drop of rain for days now. Are you sure it is wise to just let her go like that? Where is the poor dear? She might get hurt. She's more likely to hurt somebody else, given what just happened. I told her to sit down and take a break. Already rang someone to pick her up, too. That might be for the best, dear. But please, we're here to talk about the mansion, yes? Why, I absolutely adore it! Don't you, Luke? Some of the rooms will certainly have to be repurposed. We want to change the appliances and have Marianne lead on the decor, but the whole thing is just lovely. I guess. It's certainly a lot roomier than our penthouse. Exactly! Lots of space for guests, parties, a lot of room for little ones to run around too. You're still thinking of having children with this dude? At least that's what I'm assuming she's implying. Let's not discuss that right now, Buttercup. Oh, it looks like he does not want any little ones running around this uh, mansion. Anyway, I do think it would be a shame to let this mansion slip past us. But you haven't even finished touring the house. Well, we like what we've seen. I am making her job easier for her, am I not? No need for loans or long price negotiations. We can just sign a contract and close the deal. Really, you'd think the woman would be more happy about an easy sale. I know how these estate agents work, how long they had to wait and how much they had to spend even just for a single sale. Why, she should be jumping for joy by now. I'm sure the commission on this mansion is nothing to sneeze at, even if she has to split it with the, with the Isabel girl. Wow, I cannot read, guys. <laughs> do you think we could have horses here? Yes, those do sound nice, love. 
Anyway, if anyone else is interested in buying this property, I assure you that I am able and willing to give a better offer. I... A vineyard would be nice. Or maybe a... Hmm. And we do reward our people quite generously, Rose. So if I were you, I would start on that paperwork. Helicopter pad. My guy here, man. What's going on? I pause, and there's a small moment of complete silence where Rose and I just stare incredulously at Luke. It's an unspoken understanding, a rule between the two of us that we have to put on an act. With our social standing where image matters, it is also important to avoid making enemies. And to follow this rule is an easy feat for me. From youth, I have been well-trained so social butterfly, gracious and graceful. Luke, on the other hand- oh, Wait, what, Luke? No, what? Whatever would we need a helipad for? Well, he likes to play fool sometimes, even if he is anything but. Really? Because he doesn't seem to be playing. <laughs> As he throws me a wry smile, I shake my head and beckon Rose over. This is to be our home, and there is nothing she or anyone else can do to change my mind. This is a place that speaks of power and importance, and, at the time, of safety and comfort. Perhaps we can even have our family here. Again, you are a bold woman. There is definitely no better gift than this for our special date. Why, everything here is absolutely wonderful. Whoa, why? Except for this ugly painting in the study. It looks like a bad fake of an Edvard Munch painting. Like, man, the way they just like, spoof that in front of you. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another 5%. I doubt anyone can, of course. Or, you know what? Just add 15% to the listing price, and we can sign all the paperwork now. Well, damn, woman. <laughs> Good on you. I guess, if that's what you want. That won't be any trouble. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. I'll have copies sent to you so you can look over them. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, you're more than welcome to. No, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate a private tour of the place a lot more, I think. Alright. Should I let Marianne in, then? Marianne? Marianne? Alright, oh, she's been waiting outside the study this whole time, hasn't she? I'll need to have a little chat with her to move this little mansion project forward. Please do. There's a look of apprehension when the other woman enters the study. Yet, like a professional, I see the moment when she steals herself and masks her worry. Admirable. We have this project then? Of course. Will you be needing anything from us? Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Oh, is a meeting really all that necessary, Marianne? I guess we can send Johans to help you out. I've been pronouncing it Johannes. It's Johans. <laughs> you two can start by getting rid of this ugly painting. They've got to stop doing that. A hush falls upon the room at my request. What painting? And lo and behold, the painting is gone. Oh, oh. Uh oh. In its place, a mirror stands, which leads me to look at my own confused expression. Okay, so I'm betting that the letter did affect everyone, just in completely different ways. And apparently, I assumed naturally that when you're playing the main character, your choices affect how other people can or may or may not survive. But I'm assuming that it's the other way around. Since I'm playing this girl, I have to try to keep her alive. Because apparently, I may have, keyword, may have failed with Isabel. I still have to believe she's still alive, critical condition, in the hospital. You guys are just gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> in its place, a mirror stands, which leads me to look at. Okay. Odd. Well, no matter. Back to the topic at hand. Marianne, dear, we are simply far too busy to meet up. Alright, I could free up my schedule, question the need for a meeting. Mm. Okay, 
I think it goes both ways. I think I have to keep her alive and other people around me alive. It's 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 a tough deal here right now. Ah, okay. If I question the need for a meeting, we're gonna en end up canceling the meeting. But I might need to talk to Marianne some more. I don't. I ugh. free up the schedule. Let's do it. But I guess we can free up a day to meet with you. <clears throat> I don't really need another maudlin Monday reading about Maury anyway. The book club can function without me for one day. What time shall we be seeing each other? How does lunch sound? Besides, my house has a high priority over the book club. Why, we can hold the next meeting in this place. Surely the beauty and grandeur of it all will inspire spirited and love lively debates about whether modern day writers could match up to the classics. I might as well clear up the rest of my week to handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. Any social activity can be put off until the Ermengarde or rather the Wrights Mansion's great debut. I'll have my fill of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Alright, let me check the relationship right now. Alright, Marianne's is just I'm gonna call her Marianne. I, I just it feels it just sounds better. <laughs> <clears throat> so her friendship Cross the threshold. That's good, I guess. I don't know uh, how relationships affect the game. I'm assuming that it will supposedly keep them alive. I could be wrong. It's just maybe it's just a gimmick. I don't know. <clears throat> Although with a project of this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. A more thorough inspection of the place is also preferable. Breakfast then. It's a date. It's really not. All right, Monday, ten o'clock sharp. We'll see you then. Actually, Marianne suggested that we meet at nine, but who is even awake at that unholy hour? Guys like me, the early birds. I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to Cardiff. We say our goodbyes, shake hands, and make it clear without outright saying it that we now own this house. By the time we left the mansion ground, sunset is almost upon us. So, you really want to buy this place then? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. I feel elation when I hear those words from him. It's not every day one is able to please someone like Luke. He gives away false flattery to sway those who starve for his attention and approval. But in the privacy of closed doors, he would often express his grievances. He neither censored himself in front of me nor spared me from his criticism. You have been saying the penthouse was getting a bit too small for you. Happy anniversary! Oh. That time of the year already? Man, I don't like this guy at all. <laughs> he forgot about it last year too. Why are you with him? I understand that he's a busy man, but... Is that why you want to buy it? Yes. You don't like it? I do, but I remember you used to talk about how you wanted to live next to the beach. Botany Bay, Kent. I remember the sea, water, the sh water that stretched on, on. Wow, water that stretched on for miles and miles, as far as the eyes can see. As a kid, I loved our beach trips, swimming all the all day as much as I could. I was a well-behaved child, and the only time I was ever truly, I was ever truly difficult was when I refused to get out of the waters, even when my fingers had gone all wrinkly. And even when they managed to pull me out of the water, there was always sandcastles. The day before we married, I told Luke that I wanted a house on a beach and a dog. And a kid or two. None of those came true seven years later. That was a childish dream. Living next to the beach is so impractical if you really think about it. I don't know. It's not a bad thought to see you in a bathing suit every day. Maybe another time, love. We still have forever, don't we? He says nothing, only grabbing my hand and holding it tight as we spend the rest of the ride home in silence. I miss the sea. Sick and hovering over the loo at 3 in the morning, the picture I paint right now is hardly glamorous. Oh, you're a painter. A horribly fishy taste is left in my mouth as I throw up what I have for dinner, and I hate the acrid stench that fills the lavatory. The burning sensation at the back of my throat is of no help whatsoever. I can feel another wave of nausea come up on me when the door opens. Hannah, what are you doing so early out of bed? I'm fine, love. I must have just eaten something bad. 
That's all I managed to say before vomiting again into the porcelain throne. Lovely. Just go back to bed, Luke. I'm going to clean up here. I refuse to look at him. I don't want him to see me like this. The last time I've had a horrible morning retching into a toilet was during my college years, being the life of the party. Thoughtless and shameless, I had thrown away months to frivolous merriment and pointless hookups. I didn't even retain any of the connections I had made from that time. Sure, they still know of me and I still know of them, and we still do business from time to time, but I've lost touch with anyone who I didn't see on a daily basis. I hardly have any of the friends I had when I was still Hannah Evans, teachers, fellow university students, drinking buddies, and old conquests like Jack. No, don't touch me, sweetie. It's disgusting. So he's doing the only right thing so far. Good on you, Luke. I'm disgusting. Luke sits down next to me on the toilet floor to hold my hair even as I cough up more fish. He wipes the vomit from the corner of my mouth and just stares. Do I need to fire someone? I don't feel sick. Just feeling a bit under the weather, dear. It's been unbearably hot as of late, hasn't it? I do wish it would rain. Are you sure it wasn't those sweets? <laughs> he told you not to eat those sweets. <laughs> Maybe. Well, don't laugh. Well, <laughs> I can't help if you make that sort of face. <laughs> This scene happening next to a loo filled with sick just makes the whole thing bizarre and it nearly makes me start giggling as well. I try to stifle it though as I smack him on the shoulder. I'm not making a face, Luke. Stop laughing. Shut up. <laughs> when he would not stop laughing, I let myself go as laughter bubbles from my own throat and I forget whatever ill feelings plagued me. We are just husband and wife laughing together at, at a funny face, the little things in life. I let myself go because I know that these moments will not last forever. But if I just know the terrible things that are to come for us, I would have wished with everything I have then and there that the laughter stayed. That's not right. Huh? Oh, hiya! Come on now! The place is buzzing with movers, carrying furnishings here and there, along with several chunks of personal belongings taken from our penthouse. Luke watches them like a hawk, making sure nothing is handled carelessly or gets stolen. Careful now! I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one-of-a-kind commissioned paintings. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you lot make. Luke, do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? Pantry, buttercup. Careful, that's Emma Hot. No, no, you there, put that down. You do not manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. I can see the exasperation, I have to send the foreman an apologetic glance. Even, Yo even Johans rolls his eyes as he goes by. Considering Luke is always like this during a project, Johans and I have gotten used to it. Poor Marianne, on the other hand, looks a bit stressed at seeing the gigantic mess before quickly going back to work. Everything just has to be perfect, exactly the way he wants it. One little thing out of place, one little thing that didn't fit, the image he clearly constructed in his head, and Luke gets bent out of shape. Sweetie, why don't we go and sort your suits upstairs? Let your Hans and Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. We have this, Mrs. Wright. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel bursts. Blood stains are so troublesome to clean. Taking him by the hand, I lead him upstairs into our bedroom. This place has been arranged first so that we can get some rest no matter what state the rest of the mansion is in. I am definitely glad I can just lie down on a soft comfy bed after what has been a busy morning. I am more amazed you guys are comfortable in this place at all. Watching Luke act like his life depended on getting this move done is tiring all on its own. And to think I have a whole day of this ahead of me. I feel the bed dip beside me as Luke sits down with a, with a sigh. Well, I can't wait for this to be over. I don't know. It's fun seeing you all fired up. Here at home and not at work, you know. You know I can't always be home, Hana. I have a company to run, unless you've forgotten. I haven't forgotten. You're the one who insists on being there to make sure each and every little thing is under control. I just... I just really miss you sometimes, and I wish you were at home more often. Why, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loopy and I'll start bringing cats home. And soon enough, 
One day, you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things would shred up your precious furniture. Besides, you don't even like cats. True, true. Dogs are infinitely superior, of course. But what about the wet dog smell? The mess? I'm not cleaning up after a mutt, no matter how cute. If you think about it, a cat would be better. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh. It's not always that we can just lie down and talk about these sorts of things. To joke around as if we're teenagers again with very little problem in the way of responsibilities and roles. To hear his genuine honest to goodness laughter is a rarity. This is just the second time as of late, and I can only see it as signs of good things to come. All good points. Dude, we can never forget it's a complete and utter racist. <laughs> I guess we could just have kids. That is, if you prefer dealing with soiled nappies and sick as opposed to dead birds, mice, and litter boxes. I've already told Marianne about turning the second bedroom into a children's room. I guess sometimes I don't know when I'm crossing a line. I didn't say that I'm a good comedian, did I? Not this again. What? I... I wasn't being serious. It's not something you take the piss out of. Having a kid is a big responsibility, Hannah. We've talked about this, haven't we? We... I'm... not ready to be a parent. I'd probably end up killing the little brat by the week's end. Hmm... We're gonna go with Mari- oh, sorry, not Marianne. We're gonna go with what? Hannah here. Hannah? Hannah. Wants. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Carly likes you well enough. The mention of our little goddaughter places a conflicted look on his face. Sometimes it is cute when he denies having a soft spot for the little girl. But then sometimes it's sad and it makes me wonder what happened to make him think so poorly of himself in this regard. Yes, well, it's Kylie. The tyke likes everybody and, on the off chance she doesn't, likes them well enough as long as they buy her sweets. And sure, that kid is great, but if I get tired of her, I can ship her back to her father at the end of the day. Having kids of our own will be a whole different monster entirely. I have never heard him talk about his father in anything but a business context. I recall Damien and Wright kept hearing about him from my own father even before I met Luke. The business world praised him for running a tight ship until, all until one mistake led to a great loss with the Enterprise. It was then that news of Luke Wright, Prodigy's son and successor to the old man started to show up and he aided in its recovery and growth up until the Great Recession. I'm getting a bit off track. Regardless, I have never heard him talk about his father like one would talk about family. I think you'll be a great father. There is a smile, no matter how half-hearted it may be. I do really think that. He might not be a good, honest man. A part of me knows that, though I try to silence it. But I know Luke well enough that he will be a better father than either Damien Wright or Henry Evans. I love my father, but he never had, a, he never had the time. If it is any consolation, I think you'd be a decent mother. On the other hand, I have never heard of his mother. A silence settles, both comfortable and uncomfortable. There is a familiarity in each other's company despite the awkwardness that had transpired. Defenses and masks down without anybody else looking, we are both together and alone in this quiet. But a crash from downstairs startles us both out of our reverie. Luke lets out a heavy sigh before coming up to his feet and straightening his jacket. I'll have to attend to that then! Alright guys, I'm gonna end the video here for today. Thank you for watching. Until the next one.